let's cast our mind back to last week. I gave you this exact set of data. I wonder if you actually remember looking at it. Uh, it's a classic situation with data in terms of heights of students. Um, you might recall I actually got you, I think it was on the Wednesday, to have a look back at this set of data because there was a particular feature in this set of data that's not obvious until you start to look at the numbers closely. Does anyone remember? What's the feature in this set of data that was important? Started with an M, sort of. Or a B, depending on the way you think about it. Um, we looked at modality. Do you remember that? This idea of some sets of data have one or more like very common scores, and we called that the modality of the scores. This has a particular bi um, modality. It's bimodal, right? And so if you had a look, I mean, I'll just highlight it for you, right? You've got um, the mode here and then the mode here. They're not exactly the same, 31, but they don't need to be for the clear peaks to be observable if you say, for example, graphed the data, right? Now, this is important to know because we said, look, if it's bimodal, something like the mean or the standard deviation is much less meaningful because, get it? Meaningful? Um, because the mean is like in the middle here. It doesn't represent any group of people at all right? Uh, at least in this particular set of data. Now the th key thing that I wanted to remind you of as you had a look at this was that even though there are so many numbers, numbers here, there's really just, and this is worth actually jotting down because it's going to be a point of contrast, there is really just a single variable. This is single variable data. And that's why uh, when we went to our calculators and we're doing the calculation on this, you may recall the buttons that we pressed, we ended up pressing um, that one that said one var, single variable, right? Now I promised that we would go past single variable, even though you've got like all of these complicated things, really it's just the height that is changing, that is the one quantity that we're interested in. We're now moving into this second subtopic, for those of you keeping track at home, in the syllabus, it's M A. Uh, S2.2, Mathematics Advanced Statistics, where in this section here where we're going to now look at, here's the, the actual heading for you, bivariate data. Now, like the name suggests, right, it's a pretty simple idea. Instead of having just a single variable, we're interested in two. What is a variable after all? Uh, it's just a quantity that changes, right? So by very data, all it means is two quantities that change. It's just so important that when you're throwing around, flinging terminology like this around, you understand there's a simple idea underneath it. Uh, and in this case, it's just like there's two things I want to often compare. What if I wanted to compare not just height, but say age? In this particular example, it'd be less meaningful because everyone's roughly the same age in year 12, but maybe if I broadened out to the entire school, I now have two data points that are worth comparing to each other. Does that make sense? Okay, so the way to make uh, sense of this is to have a think about some actual data, and we're gonna do this all together. And I thought what I would do is bring out a bit of personal data for you. Uh, this is a personal piece of bivariate data that I plotted this morning. Um, and before we talk about what it is, I just want you to take note of what's not there. Okay? There's no labels on the axes. Uh, there is a scale, but there are no units. Right? So over on the left here, you're like, oh, 4.5, 0.6, 4.5 or 4.6 what? Right? Um, that, by the way, tells you something important. You know when we've had a look at single variable data? Uh, you would have a vertical axis that almost always was in whole numbers. Why is that? I don't have whole numbers here. Why do we usually have whole numbers on our single, uh, and our vertical axis? Any suggestions? Hmm. Should we go back? Have a look at this data set again. What would the horizontal axis have been in this case. The horizontal axis in this case would probably be height. It's, it's the single variable, right? But the vertical axis is almost always in single variable data, this over here. It's the frequency. It's how many of these things there are. You're counting them, therefore you get whole numbers. Make sense? Okay, you're not going to have 31 and a half people who are in that 165 to 169 range. So when you have a look here, Clearly you're not in Kansas anymore, yeah? You are no longer counting a thing. There is some measurement happening, but it's not being counted. Okay, does anyone want to have a guess, just a wild stab in the dark, what this data set actually means? Like I said, my clue was, it's personal 
to me. Any guesses? Say, say that again, Michael. Numerical continuous. Numerical, oh, okay, so we're having a look at the data type. This is numerical, and yes, it is continuous because you can see these, um, you've got all these different ranges. It's not discrete like we talked about before. But the question I was really asking was, what does this data signify? Like, what's its meaning to me? Uh, and the answer is, it's about running. So I like to run. Uh, it took me a long time, like when I was your age, I was kind of obsessed with like my friends who were popular were like strong and muscular. And in case you had not worked out already, I am neither strong nor muscular. Uh, it took me a long time to realize, you know what? Distance running is your thing. That's, that's what you can actually do. So these are runs that I have done based on their distance, okay? Uh, I generally run like my shorter runs of six kilometers because that's how long of a cross country I did when I was in year 12, so that's my benchmark. Um, and then I've been trying to work toward, <clears throat> you might be able to work out, I mean, I don't know if you can quite see that scale over there. Um, there's a number just above 20. Would anyone like to hazard a guess what that number is? It's significant to anyone who knows about running. Yeah, go ahead, Keegan. It's a half marathon, so 21.1 kilometers, because a real marathon is 42.2. Um, I'm nowhere close to that, by the way. So this is what I'm trying to do. And you can see, I have this measure of how fast I've run on the vertical axis. Abbas. Uh, so let's look at this closely. So these are not lengths of time. These are not durations. This is how fast, this is a measure of how fast I'm going, right? Now the particular pace I've got is just from the app that keeps track, right? So this is how many minutes it takes me to run a single kilometer um, on the basis of these particular runs that I've done. So just have a look, uh, 4.3 minutes, that's like 4 minutes and uh, I don't know, like 20 seconds-ish, right? That's the very fastest I can run. In fact, if, if I'm memory serves, I think it's 4 minutes 19. And then up here, that's something like, that's close to 5 minutes, right? Like 4 minutes 57, 58, something like that, okay? Now, these are the two variables, right? Pace and kilometers. Underneath this, this is the first important thing you need to jot down underneath your heading of bivariate data. Because we are not just looking at a single variable and how often or how frequently it occurs, what we have is two kinds of variable, generally speaking, and this is language you've heard before, but I just want to formalize it. Now is the right time. Generally speaking, one of them will be what we call independent, and the other one will be dependent, which is exactly what it sounds like. There is some relationship between these two things, and the dependent variable changes in response to the independent variable. Let me say that one more time, right? When you have a look at your two variables, you can tell which one is independent and which one is dependent based on which one of them changes in response to the other. Okay, there's one that's kind of like free, you can make it whatever you like, and then the other one just kind of like follows suit depending on that, depending on the independent variable. So let's have a look at this data set that I just gave you, right? Now this one's a tricky one and I, I, I like it because actually we can have a discussion about it. Which do you think is the independent variable and which would you think is the dependent variable? Now just put your hands down for a second, I'm actually going to get you to vote for a minute. And um, I'm just going to say right out the gate, uh, there's no wrong answer to this so long as you have a reason for it. Okay? 